Hey guys, this is Heroic Flamingo, and welcome to my Guild Wars 2 class guide for the Scourge. So in this video, we're going to be looking at the Scourge's exclusive weapon, and what weapon skills that gives you. Uh, we'll also be looking at the uh, healing, utility, and elite skills that the um, Scourge has at its disposal, as well as having a look at how it completely overhauls the profession mechanics for the Necromancer, uh, making it completely different. And then also we'll have a look at the actual elite specialization for the Scourge, have a look at each individual trait and see how that can make your skills and weapons even more powerful. So if you're interested in playing as a Scourge, or if you already are and you want to know more, then sit tight and we'll get started right now. Okay, so before we get into it, I just want to give you a quick profession overview for the Scourge. So Scourges channel their life force into the desert sand to summon biddable shades that damage enemies and create shields for their allies. They use punishment skills to torment their enemies and will torches to light the path to their destruction. So that pretty much says it all, but they get a new weapon called uh, the torch, which obviously is an offhand weapon, so you've got a couple of extra weapon skills we're going to look at. You get a whole new set of healing, utility and elite skills called punishment abilities, which we're going to go into as well. And then also the profession mechanic, the, the normal Necromancer Death Shroud is completely replaced with the ability to summon and control sand shades. So we're going to go into that in a lot more detail later on, but first we're going to start with weapon skills. Okay, so I wanted to have a look at the new weapon skills for the Scourge. So the Scourge is able to equip a torch, which Necromancers normally can't. So I'm just going to stick a torch on the offhand there. And obviously as it's not to give me two new weapons. So this elite spec only gives you two new weapon skills, which is a little bit annoying. But we'll have a look anyway and, and try these skills out. So now I've got a torch equipped. Let's have a look. So our, our first uh, new ability here is Harrowing Wave. So unleash a wave of corrupted fire, burning and tormenting enemies. Gain life force for each enemy struck. Alright, that sounds pretty awesome. So you see you're putting burning and torment on them. It's gaining life force for each person struck. So if you've got a bunch of people in a line, so it's, it's just a wave. So let's have a look how this comes out here. So let's target this enemy. The the range on it is 600, so it's sort of mid-range. But let's see if I can hit a couple of enemies at once. Alright, yeah, awesome. So torment and burning. So that's pretty cool. So it shoots out a wave in front of you. Uh, and not only does it you know, damage enemies, it also burns them, inflicts torment on them and gives you life force as well. So there's quite a few different things and, and it's mid-range so you don't have to be too close to use it but it will shoot through all the enemies in your path so that's really cool. So your second new weapon skill is Oppressive Collapse. So corrupt the ground under your target. If they remain within the area they will be knocked down. Grant might to allies near your target based on how many conditions they have. Alright, pretty cool. So, as you can see, so it's so it's a targeted ability, so it's not a, a ground one that you have to put down on the ground. So, your target that you've got, you press that and it's going to put it underneath them. You can do it from long range to 900. It's got a radius of 240 around that person. And um, so if they stay within that area, so if they're a pretty stationary enemy, which what you want to use it against, it's going to knock them down, and any allies in that area is going to uh, get might, depending on how many conditions they have. So the more conditions, the more might. So as you can see, two stacks of might per condition. Uh, and the, the knockdown is for two seconds. So let's have a quick look. So let's try this out on this guy. So if I, I don't need to be too close, so I can stand quite far away. All right, excellent. So you can see it knocks them down, puts torment on them, and you're also going to be helping out any allies in that area as well. As you can see that's still inflicting damage now. That's quite a long lasting effect so you can integrate that in with your normal weapon skills to improve your, your build even more. So that's a couple of new skills, only two, but a couple of cool weapon skills to choose from there as well uh, that you can add into your build. So that's the weapon skills. Uh, so the next thing I want to do is have a look at the new Scourge healing skill. Alright, so now we'll look at the brand new healing skill for the Scourge. So this is your first look at a punishment ability, which is a brand new type of uh, skills that only the Scourge can use. Okay, so this healing ability is called Sand Flare. So grant nearby allies a barrier. Convert a boon on nearby enemies into Torment and Cripple. So obviously you can see that it doesn't even say there, but it is a self-heal, an initial self-heal as you can imagine. But it also grants nearby allies a barrier, um, which basically gives some extra armor on top of their health. And so if any of the enemies nearby uh, have boons, it's going to turn those into Torment and Cripple. So that's pretty cool as well. Let's have a little look at what this looks like. Boom, there you go. You can see I've got a barrier there. I've got health. 
Um, you can see that effect on me, it's got a barrier for uh, a certain amount of seconds there. And then also, if any enemies around me, um, you know, if they have boons, it's going to turn that into torment and cripple, so it's going to turn their boons into conditions, which is pretty cool as well. So it's not your basic healing skill, it does have quite a few cool effects, so, so that's awesome. So uh, that is the new healing skill. So now let's have a little look at the new utility skills for the Scourge. Alright, so now we're going to have a look at the new utility skills for the Scourge. These are all punishment abilities, so let's have a look. So if you go to utility skills here, we've got an extra four across the top here. Uh, and these are unique to the Scourge and are all punishment abilities. So let's give those a go now. So I'll equip the first three of those. Let's try them out. Alright, so your first one is Trail of Anguish. So this, leave a trail of sand as you travel. Grant boons to allies passing through it. Inflict burning on enemies and corrupt a boon into cripple and torment. So if you're moving around, this is going to give you swiftness, stability as you can see. But it's also going to uh, give boons to allies and put conditions on enemies. So let's have a little look at what this looks like. If I press that now, as you can see, it's leaving a trail of sand behind me. And these guys have all got conditions on them. It will also give boons to allies as well. So it's pretty cool if you're moving around the battlefield then that's a pretty cool way to spread some conditions around. So your next utility skill is Desiccate. So draw vital energy from your foes to gain life force and grant boons to nearby allies. Gain additional life force per target struck. Convert a boon on affected enemies to torment and cripple. Okay, so this is a uh, radius ability, so it's going to affect everyone around you. It's going to draw energy from them, give you life force, give boons to allies. So quite a lot. Uh, the more people you have around you the better because it's going to give you additional life force and also convert a boon on the affected enemies to torment and cripple so it's doing a quite a few things to the people around you uh, it's quite a few cool effects there so let's have a look see what this looks like Such right. pretty cool animation there so it's going to be like I said increasing your life force it's going to be helping out your allies turning their boons into conditions uh, so that's quite a few effects that that's going to have so this one here Sand Swell. So this is a ground targeted ability as you can see. And it's plunge into the ground creating a portal through Tyria for allied use. Grant allies using this passage a health barrier. Convert a boon on nearby enemies into torment and cripple. Alright, that's a few different things. So let, let's give this a go. So I'm going to create a portal on the ground. Allies can use it. They get a health barrier if they use it. And converts boons on nearby enemies into torment and cripple, like most of these seem to do. So let's uh, try out, see what, this, see what this does. Oh my god. Okay. So as you can see, you can travel between the portals. It's going to gain a health barrier. It's also going to convert their, their boons into, um, into conditions. And then also. Um, it's pretty cool because your allies can use it as, uh, as well to move around. So it's not just for you. That's quite a cool thing in a group situation. Uh, so that's quite a different one as well. Alright, so now I'm out of combat. I'm going to switch over to the fourth and final new utility skill. So the fourth punishment ability here. So let's have a look. We've got another ground target ability. And it's Serpent Siphon. So unleash ghostly serpents towards foes in a target area. Serpents striking their targets become magical sand, which grants allies a barrier. Convert a boon from struck enemies into torment and cripple. So ground targeted, like I said range 900, so you can do it from long range, but you'll place it on the enemy and it's got a 360 radius. Serpents are going to strike the enemy. Uh, it's going to grant allies a barrier and convert the enemy boons into torment and cripple, as all of them seem to be doing. That's pretty cool. So let's try that out on one of these people here. So I can stand back and I can... Oh, oh it's quite a big one. So you can place that down there. Boom. As you can see, serpents going out there. Conditions there. It's going to be buffing your allies as well at the same time. So, so that's a pretty cool ability to use. So that is the final utility skill there. So that's all of those. So the next thing we want to do is have a look at the brand new elite skill for the Scourge. Alright, so now I want to have a look at the brand new and exclusive elite skill for the Scourge. So this is an elite punishment skill, as you can imagine. Uh, as an elite skill, it's going to be the most powerful skill in your bar, but it does come with a long cooldown, so it's got a 90 second cooldown. So this is called Ghastly Breach. So this is Breach into the Realm of Torment for a brief time, granting might to allies and slowing enemies. 
convert a boon on enemies into torment and cripple each pulse. So it's got five pulses. It's going to one second interval. So it's going to last for five seconds. And it's going to affect people in a radius of 300 around you. So relatively close. Um, so you're going to be granting might to allies. Slowing enemies. Converting boons on enemies into um, conditions. So effectively you're going to be running around. Buffing everyone around you. And uh, hurting the enemies around you as well. So should we give this a quick little go? Alright, as you can see. Oh, so it's a radius skill that, yeah, see what I mean? That it's done damage to them, put conditions on them. So it's a radius skill that you put down, so if you move, it doesn't come with you. So that's pretty cool. So if you've got an area of a bunch of enemies, you can stick that down, but then still run out and use some ranged abilities while that uh, damages the enemies and buffs all your allies within melee range. Okay, so that is a pretty cool new elite skill there for the Scourge. So now we've done that. Um, the next thing we're going to have a look at is just the overall profession mechanics for the Scourge and have a look at how it completely overhauls the Necromancer's basic profession mechanics. Alright, so now we're going to have a look at the unique profession mechanics for the Scourge. So we've obviously been over the, the first thing, so you get a torch as a weapon and you get um, new punishment skills. But now I want to show you what happens to the Necromancer's Death Shroud. So as you're probably aware, if you already played as a Necro, you know that you, you have a life force bar on the bottom, which you have here. But normally, you can press F1 and you go into Death Shroud, which replaces your first five abilities uh, and, and all of that. This is completely different, so it's absolutely nothing like it. So it's, it's a complete fundamental change to how the Necro is going to be played. Um, so the Scourge is pretty cool. So your F1 ability here is a ground target ability called Manifest Sand Shade. So, it says, manifest a sand shade using some of your life force. Using a shade ability, strikes enemies near you and your shades. So, as you can see there, it's a uh, long range, uh, it's a radius ability, it's ground target. So, you place a shade, and obviously it's got a radius of 180, so you want to place it near your enemy. So, before I actually show you that, let me just show you these abilities here. So, your F2 to F5. So, these abilities actually make your shades more powerful and they spend your life force so you see you've got three little things here you can have three shades active at any one time so if that's uh, filled up then you can see that's being used and it's it's basically an ammo skill so you've got free ammo there and and like you can see uh, count recharges 15 seconds so it will recharge a, a piece of ammo every 15 seconds let's have a look at these abilities so your f2 ability is nefarious favor so your shades convert a condition or nearby allies into a boon. So once you've got your shades placed down, um, you can use this to basically buff some of your allies that are near that shade. Okay, um, F3, Sand Cascade. So sand rises up near your shades to shield nearby allies. So once again, it's going to buff the allies around. You can see there, it tells you what the life force cost is. So 2,487. It tells you the, the details on the barrier that it grants to your allies. So this one here. Garish Pillar. So induce fear in enemies around your sand shade. So this is going to fear any enemies near your sand shade. So basically make them run away uh, for a second. Uh, which is going to mean that they're not going to be able to attack. So that's a pretty cool thing to be able to whack out in combat as well. And then you have here your F5, which is a Desert Shroud. So it's not a shroud like the Death Shroud that you have where it replaces all your skills. Um, but what it does is it enters you into the Desert Shroud, gaining a powerful barrier and pulsing necrotic energy around your sand shades. So effectively it's going to put a, a barrier on you, so it's going to make you uh, harder to kill. And it's going to uh, put pulsing necrotic energy around your sand shades, which is going to damage the people around it. So that's a pretty uh, powerful one as well. And then here, obviously below it, you've got your life force bar as normal life force. Uh, as you as you're aware, comes back when you um, kill enemies around you. Certain skills um, make it come back, and your traits can help you make it so you can build up your life force even quicker. So now I'm going to demonstrate this. So I'm going to place down um, a sand shade. And then I'm going to start using these abilities to try them out. Okay, so if I target this guy here. So I can place a sand shade like that anywhere near this enemy. So if I stick that there. And maybe place down a second sand shade either side of the enemy. I, I use my F2. That's obviously buffing my allies. F3. F4. F5. 
and let's try out another one. I can put down another two sand shades here, and then I can try out my F5 Desert Shroud. Alright, so there's a couple of pretty cool abilities there, and, and there they've died. So it's, it's, you know, it's fundamentally different to what you're used to with the Necromancer. Pretty cool though, being able to place these guys down whenever you want, and then affecting that area. Just want to try it out again. It's pretty cool, um, interesting concept there. So that is the overall profession mechanics for the Scourge. So now I just want to have a look at the Elite Specialization and have a little closer look. Okay, so now I'm going to have a look at the Elite Specialization for the Scourge and have a look at the individual traits within it to see how it makes your character even more powerful by buffing your weapons and your skills and all of that. Okay, so your Elite skill you have to put in your third slot here, so as long as you have Scourge active you'll be able to do all the things that we've discussed. As you can see there, you can wield torches, so as long as you've got this here you can wield torches. So your first passive here is Mantle of Sand. So gain the power to craft sand shadows and command them using your life force. Gain access to punishment and shade skills. This is what we went through before. This basically gives you access to all of these Scourge specific abilities. So your first choice here, you've got Abrasive Grit. So granting an ally a barrier removes condition, afflicting them and grants might. So obviously we had quite a few skills that get granted a barrier to our allies. So that's going to make that even better, granting them might and removing conditions as well. You've got Fell Beacon, so Torch skills gain reduced recharge, gain expertise based on your condition damage. So as you can see there, 20% recharge reduction on your Torch skills. So if you're using a Torch um, as your offhand for one of your weapon sets, you're probably going to want to go with that one. Nourishing Ashes, so gain life force when you inflict burning and remove or corrupt a boon. So, you know, you do that quite a lot, inflict burning, you're always removing and corrupting boons with this um, build, so you're going to gain life force for each time you do that, so that's pretty good. Sand Sage, so gain concentrate, sorry, yeah, gain concentration and expertise for each of your active sand shades. So obviously if you've got quite a few sand shades active at any one time, you always want to have two or three active, then you're going to gain concentration and expertise as well. Uh, your next choices are Desert Empowerment. So Manifest Sand Shade, sorry, Manifest Sand Shade grants a barrier to allies near it. So whenever you use Manifest Sand Shade, yeah, you're going to grant a barrier to your allies as well. Uh, here you've got Sadistic Searing. So Punishment Skills gain reduced recharge and cause your next Manifest Sand Shade to inflict burning on foes near it. So that's pretty cool. So obviously if you're using quite a lot of the, the new Punishment Skills that the Scourge can use, this is going to gain you 20% reduced recharge on all of those skills, as well as uh, cause an extra burning when you use Manifest Sand Shade. So here you've got Herald of Sorrow. So Desert Shroud becomes Harbinger Shroud. So this completely changes your Desert Shroud ability, which is that F5 ability we had down here. So let's see what that does. So enter the final Shroud, gaining a powerful barrier and priming the Shroud for a powerful detonation that damages enemies and bolsters allies. So that's pretty cool, making your uh, Desert Shroud into more of a, an explosive thing. So, so that's quite cool, and you might want to consider that for your build. So here you've got Blood as Sand. Reduce incoming damage for each Sand Shade you have active. Okay, so that's cool, damage reduction 3% per Sand Shade. So um, if you have them active quite a lot of time, that's just going to mean so you take even less damage. And then your, um, your options here, you've got Sand Savant. So summon only one shade at a time. This greater shade has a modified recharge. Influence a larger area with shade skills. All right, okay, so this is pretty cool. So you, you only summon one shade at a time and um, basically recharge is increased by 100% and influences a larger area, so it has a 120 radius increase. So that, that changes it quite a lot. So there's quite a few things within this uh, trait system here that actually do fundamentally change even how the Scourge works, so that is pretty cool. So you've got demo Demonic Law, so torment you inflict deals increased damage and causes your foes to burn. Pretty much a lot of that stuff we did was converting enemies, boons into torment and whatnot. So if you're putting that on a lot of people, you're going to be burning them as well, and it's increasing the damage of your torment, so that's pretty cool. 
And then finally, you've got Feed from Corruption. So when you remove or corrupt a boon from an enemy, gain that boon. So it lists all the boons there. And obviously we saw there was a lot of skills that um, removes and corrupts boons from an enemy. So that's going to be pretty cool. So you'll be able to move those boons over to yourself rather than just turning them into uh, conditions on the enemy. Alright, so that is all of the uh, traits within the specialization to help you further, um, you know, customize your Scourge and make it even more powerful. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw together a little basic Scourge build and I'll do a um, combat demonstration for you guys. Alright, so I've thrown together a, a basic little Scourge build here. I've got the axe main hand with the, with the exclusive torch offhand there. And if I do use my other weapons, I've got the dagger and the warhorn. Uh, all of these skills along here are all specific to the Scourge, so they're all punishment abilities. So I'll be trying those out. And then I'll give these sand shades a little go as well. So let's, let's get started. So, first of all, let's throw down a couple of sand shades. <laughs> Alright, so that's pretty cool, uh, just showing off some of the basics there of utilising the sand shades and all of your cool new punishment abilities. So I think that pretty much covers everything for the Scourge. So if you, um, you know, if you have any more questions, stick them in the comments. If you wanted to watch a video showing off all of the classes and elite specialisations, then I've got that in the channel, so check that out. I'll also be doing a nice guide like this for all of the classes and all of the elite specialisations, so do check out my channel, so like and subscribe to be kept up to date. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you later.